We are standing at one of the most famous landmarks in the country. And this landmark isn't made just from brick and mortar. It's made from winners, losers, memories, and cutting edge technology. It's the world famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This race course was the first of its kind, and it's seen many changes in both the auto industry and the technology field. And that's why we're here today, to explore how technology is used in the racing world. <laughs> Because racing cars require such incredibly specific timing, cars finishing as close as a hundredth of a second apart, it's vital that the Indianapolis Motor Speedway be equipped with the technology to make that happen. Let's take a behind the scenes look at what it takes to time the greatest race in the world. We are on the second floor of the Pagoda here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, talking with John Kosky, who is the Director of Timing and Innovation for right. IndyCar, right? Correct, yeah. So can you share with us a little bit about what you do and what your team does to make the race day so successful? Absolutely. Uh, as being the director of timing and innovation, uh, half of what we do is actually the timing and scoring of the events. Uh, we time the practices, the qualifications, and the races for all of the IndyCar series events that's on the schedule each season. Uh, the innovative part is the, all of this data that we acquire through our systems has to be distributed to uh, literally folks all over the world. So we have to come up with some creative ways to pass not only timing information, but we also acquire all the telemetry information off the cars, and that has to be distributed out to uh, all of our clients out there. Now we're here at Indianapolis where it's a two and a half mile oval. How many loops of intervals of timing happen throughout the race, throughout one lap? The, the oval has 36 timelines on it. Of course, the most important timeline is the start finish line behind us here. Uh, but we do time at all the other loops around the track so we can get section times or interval times around and pass that data back to the teams, uh, back to the manufacturers, and uh, again, other users or clients out there that are acquiring our data. So, and you've been doing this for about 20 years? Correct. Right? So you've Correct. probably seen a little bit of change in technology over the course of 20 years? Absolutely. I got involved uh, in, in the 90s uh, helping out with the IT side of timing and helping do live timing on the internet back when the uh, live timing wasn't a popular uh, tool, but we yeah. were one of the first series to get that out there. And then um, uh, I took over the, the full-time position in 2003 and uh, to, to actually bring more IT into it. But yeah, we've gone from a single timeline system to adding a few timelines and then more timelines over, yeah. over, over time. Uh, just to get different data sets off the track. So that's how we evolved to 36 timelines. The uh, oval here has 27 timelines on it. It's amazing. How, how big is your crew that you work with to make all this happen and make, make everything it's work? It's a pretty tight ship. We have 10 people. I have three, three full-timers, including myself. I have a full-time developer and a full-time hardware guy. And then uh, 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 the part-time people that actually go and set the track up and operate the system that you see behind us here. Yeah. There's obviously a lot to it out here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. John, we really appreciate your time. Um, is, there, is there anything else you want to share with us? Anything? I, I know you brought up a... Yeah, we were talking about here. how this all works. Yeah. Um, this is a timing transponder that goes on the car, and uh, the innovation that's in this is it's actually two-way. It sends data and receives data, so we're actually able to talk to the cars as they go around the track. Uh, several innovative things we've done uh, this year was we put a car display on the car that tells the fans uh, what position each car is in, but that display also will tell you in the pit stops how quickly they pitted in there. It'll wow. run a clock while they're in the pit. So again, it's another way of taking data and doing innovation with it and uh, getting it forward facing to the fans and to the public. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see you guys have done a lot of things. And uh, I know from a fan experience, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, great time out here with, with interacting with your phone and, and being able to see exactly what the drivers are seeing, what people are seeing on television. So um, love to hear about the innovation out of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thanks, John, so much for your time here today. You're very welcome. Thanks so much. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway has been the testing ground for the latest in engineering and technology for over 100 years. And with us today, we have Marvin Riley, who is the Director of Engine Development. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So Marvin is going to tell us a little bit about what goes into making an IndyCar engine and kind of how that's developed and how these teams uh, use uniformity in their engines and the design of the cars. So our engines are custom engines that are provided by Honda and Chevrolet. They uh, are 2.2 liter V6 turbocharged engines um, fueled with ethanol, uh, direct injection. Um, so actually they're very similar to what you might find in a Honda Accord sedan uh, or a Chevy Malibu. 
uh, it's meant to be the same type of configuration you're going to find in the showroom. But these are actually custom-built engines. They, uh, from the ground up, um, the, the blocks, the, the crankshafts, and things like that, they've all been specifically designed to make uh, six to 700 horsepower um, uh, coming out of these relatively really small engines. And uh, you know, that allows uh, our Indy cars to go uh, up to 230, 240 miles an hour here at the Speedway. Um, so a lot of work and a lot of pride, you know, goes into those engines, and those engines are then provided to uh, uh, all of our teams. We're going to have 33 cars here uh, starting uh, at the end of uh, uh, starting the Indy 500 at the end of May, and those cars are, uh, uh, you know, will be you know, carrying the banner for you know Honda and Chevrolet, and uh, year after year, and we've been doing this now for since 2012. This competition between Honda and Chevrolet. It's, oh, every year it's been a very exciting contest. So there's cool things you guys are doing with the app this year and with the engines. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you know, uh, so every car has a, a telemetry system. So actually the electronics that run our cars are very advanced, um, very cutting edge. Um, there's a computer that collects all the chassis information. There's a computer, a separate computer, that runs the engine and collects all the engine information. Each one has their own onboard memory. Uh, there's a telemetry system on every car. Uh, we call it live on air. And it actually transmits back to a central point, uh, which will be in pit lane behind us. And uh, that central part, point will distribute that information to the relevant team. So uh, Juan Pablo Montoya's car, who's the reigning champion, uh, you know, he'll be transmitting that data uh, you know, all the way around the track uh, for all 200 laps. And uh, you know, that data that will be coming off the car uh, will be telling us, you know, what's happening with the engine, what's happening with the steering, uh, what's happening with this G-loading, things like that. And uh, stuff that you can actually see on the app is like you can see his steering trace, you can see his engine speed, you, you can see his car speed. Uh, you can see what Juan is doing as he's trying to, uh, you know, get his, you know, uh, number three, Pen or sorry, number two Penske, uh, you know, around this track as fast as he can and hopefully defend his title. Um, we also, uh, you know, have timing scoring loops all the way around the track, and so uh, you can actually stay up to date exactly where your favorite driver, whether it's Juan or Scott Dixon or uh, or Will Power, any one of those really fantastic drivers, you can follow them and know exactly where they are in the race, and then you know, uh, follow along and see exactly what they're doing with their cars. Very cool. 2016 marks the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500, and today we have with us Doug Bowles, president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Hi, Doug. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> Glad to be here. It's always good when you're at the Brickyard. Yes, always good. So tell us a little bit about uh, your history with the Indy 500. Well, I grew up in Indianapolis, and if you grow up in the shadows of the Speedway, you sort of fall in love with it. So I've been around my whole life around the Speedway. I actually was a team owner at one point in time, and then been here at the Speedway for five years and been the president for three, and it's really cool to be part of the 100th running as the president. It's the stories I hear from fans and a lot of construction that we've done this last year to get ready for this event. So it's a, it's a great time to be president, and that's sort of a dream come true for me, 49 years old, to be here at the Speedway. Yeah. So what are some exciting things you guys have planned for the 100th running? Well, I think the thing that's really exciting for us is we have this opportunity at the 100th running to look back on the 99 years that came before us because it's that history and tradition that makes us special. So the 758 men and women who've competed in the 500 and the thousands that have come through our gate are what make us special. But at the same time, we can look forward to what's the next 100 years look like. This place has always been a place to test new technologies, test new things in the automobile, the man and machine together. So it's an opportunity for us to begin to dream about what those next 100 years are like. So that's really what we're trying to do. Everything leading up to the race is about celebrating our history, but looking forward as we look into the next century of Speedway, uh, Speedway history. Are there any new technology developments or anything cool in the tech realm going on that you want to tell our viewers about? Well, it's pretty crazy how technology has even changed in the last 10 years. So the race cars are rolling computers, basically. So everything that moves on the car, whether it's ro rolls, changes from a temperature or from a static state, we can kind of track those. So that's a lot of fun. But even for our fans, just with the new technology you can bring to the venue now through your, your PDA, through your cell phone, all those opportunities now, new wayfinding, uh, getting people around the venue. So those are some of the things we're starting to kind of venture into that side of the technology just to make the fan experience better. Racing technology has come a long way in the last 100 years. And what better way to get an encapsulated look at that technology than right here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thanks for tuning in for this special edition of TCC Talk at the IMS. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below.
Yeah.